Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Today, I'm going to do a fresh install of Proxmox 7 on the R610 server, and I'll follow that up with a little bit of setup and, and adding some hard drives and a CIFS share. Next on Low Res DIY. All right, first thing you're going to want to do is go to the Proxmox website and download the ISO for the installation. Just go to it, click download, wait for it to happen. I have a link in the description uh, for you. I've already downloaded it, so what I want to do is start up the iDRAC Enterprise system remotely, which I've already done. If you don't know how to do that or... Uh, haven't figured out how to set that up yet check out this video it'll show you how to do it you need an iDRAC enterprise system so if you just have the base iDRAC you won't be able to do it this way so we're going to want to go up to the virtual media click on it we want to click on launch virtual media and then we are going to add an image and from there we're going to go to our downloads we want to go to the directory where you downloaded your proxmox uh iso i put it in the downloads directory so we're going to go to downloads and we are going to look for proxmox and there it is so we'll pick it click ok we want to do details and i want to map it so what this will do is when you start up your uh system you can go into the bios or or and choose your uh boot options and we're going to choose the virtual disk so let's go ahead and do a power on right now and give it a little time to power on now it's going to take a second so if you don't have the idrac enterprise system what you need to do is get yourself a usb drive and then go and download belena etcher once it has finished downloading, you're going to want to install or insert your USB drive into your desktop. Start up Belena Etcher. It's going to ask you to select the image. And we're going to want to select that Proxmox ISO, which is in Downloads, Proxmox. We're going to click Open. It's already chose the USB drive for us. You can change it if you want, but that's the only one we have in there. And then you'll click flash and it will flash the ISO onto the USB drive. Once it finishes that, take the USB drive, install it in the, or insert it into a USB port in the machine that you want to install Proxmox in. Go ahead, boot it up, change your boot option to the USB drive and start the installation. All right, we are going to choose F11 to go to the boot BIOS manager, or the BIOS boot manager, I guess. Once it finally comes up, we're going to use the down arrow key, and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom to virtual CD. Click enter, and if you see, look over here to the... Uh, oh, the Power Edge, Edge iDRAC window, you'll notice some bytes were read. It's reading the... Uh, Proxmox ISO and it started it up so we're gonna go ahead and install Proxmox VE click enter and you'll see again over here it is going ahead and it is reading the Proxmox file you can see right there all right once the Proxmox installation stream finally comes up you want to go ahead and agree to the user agreement you can read it if you want that's up to you i'm not going to stop you hey go right ahead and i'm going to click on options when it asks for the target hard drive i'm going to click on options because i you remember i put the h200 in this system so that i could take advantage of the uh zfs controls and i want to use the raid one and it'll bring up the rest of the hard drives you can see i have four 558 megabyte hard drives and then i've got the 223 gigabyte hard drive i said gigabytes on these they are megabytes but they're gigabytes and this was the drive that i installed in the optical drive well i can't use that i don't want to use that but i can't use it because it's a different size so i'm just going to click on don't use do not use and then i'm going to click ok and it's going to do it in a zfs raid one for me and then we'll just go over to next click on it country time zone u.s english good for me password give it a password 
like I say, you should go ahead and give it an email address. That way it'll send you all the errors or any, any type of notifications that you need to know of. And then we're going to click on next. And it's going to ask for your management interface. Now this is your NIC. Most of you guys, if you're just installing this on a regular like desktop computer, you're probably only going to have one. On the R610, I have ENO1 through four are the one gigabit NICs on the back. And the other two are the 10 gigabit NIC that I installed in the machine. So I'm going to pick the first one. Uh, and utilize that for my, my internet access, my network access. It's going to ask for a host name. I don't have one, so I'm just going to add a .com on the end of that guy. And I'm going to change the PVE name to low res. If you just keep it as PVE, the uh, your node will be named PVE. Mine will be named low res. And give it an IP address. Change it to whatever you want. Right now, I'm just going to leave it as 189. That's fine. Gateway is... Dot one dot one and I'm gonna change my DNS server to the same thing one nine two one six eight one dot one and click next all right double check everything make sure it's the way you want it if it is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click install and it's gonna start installing Proxmox now this might take a little while if you're using the uh, virtual media the virtual CD that we created because hey it only transfers at 10 uh, 10 megabytes per second. It's just old hardware. It takes a while. So be patient myself. I'm going to go downstairs, get myself a, uh, another beverage and, and sit back and patiently wait. You can, uh, if you're excitable and everything, go ahead and jump down, click that like button, that subscribe button. If you dig this stuff and, uh, we'll be back in a second. Once the installation is complete, it's going to want you to reboot. So we'll click on that reboot when it does finally reboot we won't need to go back into the bios and choose a different boot option because when we initially set this up we went into the bios boot manager which it's only going to use that for the one shot go now it's going to pick up the zfs hard drives and it should boot off of them now that it's completed rebooting, it brings this screen up. It says, welcome to Proxmox virtual environment. Please use your web browser to configure this server, connect to, and it gives you your connection. HTTPS colon hack hack 192.168.1.189 colon 806. Port 806 is where you're going to need to log on at. So let's go ahead and bring up a web browser and let's go to that. And you can just go ahead and click on the advanced and proceed to this uh, IP address. All this is is Chrome's telling you that it uh, doesn't have a certificate or a, it's unsafe or whatever, but it's on your home server so or it's on your home network. So let's go ahead and click proceed to and boom, there's Proxmox. Let's log in and get past the nag. And the first thing I am going to want to do is I'm gonna wanna update this. Even though we got the latest ISO, Normally, there are some updates available, but there's a little change to the update procedure here. So let's click on update and then we're going to click on refresh. It's going to give you the nag and it's going to tell you that you need a valid subscription to get all of the updates. We'll click OK. It's going to go out and it's going to look for them and then it's eventually it's going to air out. And there's the error right there. It failed to fetch the enterprise uh, updates. So one thing that that they've done is they've added this section under updates called repository so let's go ahead and click on that and then we'll scroll down to we'll look at the repositories they have let's minimize that and you can see it has all the debian ones because proxmox runs off debian and then you can see right here the bottom one is your enterprise repository so we don't have a subscription we're working off the free version so if we just click on that we can disable it so now if we do a refresh on it it won't give us that error but hey they went a little farther with it if we click add and click ok again and right now it says repository is enterprise click on this little arrow here and you can see no subscription test Ceph, pacific whatever i'm just going to use the no subscription one i'm going to add it we're going to go back to updates. We're going to refresh it again. It's still going to give you the nag, the warning. 
but once it completes you're going to see it doesn't have that air anymore because you're not going through the enterprise system you're going to the uh, free repository the no subscription repository so let's close this guy out and I'm going to go ahead and upgrade it yes now that the update is complete the next thing I want to do is add my uh, that 240 50 gigabyte hard drive that I swapped out with the optical drive you'll notice that when Proxmox was created it took our ZFS pool that we created and it, it put two partitions out there the first one is your your boot drive and it will also hold your ISOs and your templates for your containers and the second one is just for your VM and container storage it's it's the bulk of the uh, of the partition so we're gonna go to the node low res and we're gonna go down to disks and I'm gonna make it an LVM thin uh, disk because that will be basically it's just uh, storage for the containers and the VMs uh, it's uh, created and it's going to ask which disk you want to use the only one that's available is the SDA which is that 240 gigabyte hard drive and let's give it a name you name it whatever you want I'm just gonna call it storage because I'm very creative like that and I'm gonna hit create and it is done now you can use this uh, procedure let's say if you have two hard drives you want to slap them in there you can actually no oops, wrong sorry you can uh, scroll down and you can create a zfs uh, uh, pool out of them or whatever you want to do so now we have that available for additional storage the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get some container templates which are your uh, uh, operating systems for your containers and you're going to want to get some ISOs which is your operating system for your VM so let's start off with the containers we're just gonna click on CT templates and we're gonna click on templates and Proxmox already has the people at Proxmox have already given you a bunch of templates that you can download I'm gonna just use the Ubuntu 20.04 standard I'm gonna download it because it's one of my favorites you know so a couple minutes and we'll be right back all right, now that's complete. We're going to go ahead and X out of that. And I'm going to add some ISOs. Now, the old way of doing this was you would have to go out to the, uh, well, well, you still have to go out and find the ISOs, but you would go out and you would download the ISO onto your desktop. Then you would click upload and then you would have to go out and tell it where the ISO was. Like there's the Proxmox one. You would click on it, you would click open, and then you would click upload. Well, they've uh, uh, taken a lot of those steps out now. Now you can download it straight from the uh, straight from the web. So if you go to Ubuntu's website and go to the download section, uh, and you'll find the link for downloading the ISO. I'll have links to these in the uh, in the description. Go ahead, right click on it hit copy link address go back to Proxmox right click paste that in query the URL and it will realize that it's an ISO and then you click download and bam it starts downloading it for you so it just takes away those steps of having to go out find it put it on your desktop and then upload it and da 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 okay and it's finally done downloading so the last thing I want to do as far as storage is concerned is I want to uh, add my share from my free NAS server yeah I haven't updated the true NAS yet it, it's coming eventually to the Proxmox machine here and the way we're gonna do that go to data set data center storage we want to add it's a CIFS share give it the IP address of uh, oh nope that's the name give it the name give it the IP address of the free NAS server your username and password and then pick the share that you want to use and I want to use tank and you can go over here to content right now it's just like a, a LVM thin where it 
is only going to be used for disk images. Well, I want to use it for more than that. We're going to use it for an ISO image, container templates, a VZ dump, containers, and we'll hit add. So now that's added and it's available to us on this uh, VM or on this uh, Proxmox node, I'm sorry. And you'll notice that when I click on tank, I've already downloaded a lot of ISOs that I can utilize for VMs. Containers, doesn't look like I added any containers to it, but we can utilize tank for storage for ISOs, container templates. We can use it to be the storage for VMs or containers. And, and I am going to stop this video right here because we've already made it to the 15, 16 minute mark, which is longer than I really wanted to uh, uh, go with this. But on a scale of one beer to a six pack of beer, so far we're at about a a four beer level with the install and the setup for Proxmox. So, hey, if he was a little crabby when you started this out, hopefully you're you're feeling a little bit better. Uh, next up, we are going to make a cluster uh, with the temporary Proxmox server I have. Transfer all the VMs and all the containers over to back to the R610, and uh, yeah, we'll do that on our next video. So. If you uh, enjoy this content, like I said, jump down there, karate chop the like button, and roundhouse kick the subscribe button, and we will see you next time, and cheers.